All right, we're live. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the new season of the Open Source Founder Podcast. Joining me today is Mark, co-founder and CEO of Scalar.com. Thanks so much for joining, Mark. Of course, great to be here. <laughs> Back in uh, October, uh, late October, I saw a tweet of yours where uh, once Scalar crossed a thousand stars on GitHub, you actually made a video, one or two hours, where you were reading out all the names of all the stargazers. That was awesome. It made an impression to me. So you have quickly tell us about it and since then the stars have doubled and like the community is growing super fast so <laughs> yeah no i'm glad you uh you liked the video yeah my co-founder and i cam we were thinking of a fun way to kind of celebrate that uh milestone and it, we thought it was really cool to read through all the stargazers on a live stream <laughs> it was really late it was it was probably around 12 or 12 30 a.m um but it was awesome uh and i'm really glad that you liked it and we, as you said, doubled our stargazers uh, right on New Year's Eve, and I did another <laughs> live stream. I read out the the full two thousand, so I think I think we're gonna do it every thousand, um, which is good. Uh, but yeah, that one took that one took a lot more time. <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah, yeah, no, that, I, I love it. Great idea, and like I'm excited to follow the cool things you do with media. Um, we're also trying to get creative on that front uh, with my co-founders. So yeah. And, and speaking of co-founders and team, you have put together a stellar team at Scalar. Uh, all the co-founders and the engineers, they're all previous founders from YC companies. They had acquisitions. Uh, you yourself had an acquisition prior to Scalar. Uh, you sold your company. So how did you do that? How did you put together such a good team? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a great question. Um, I know everyone talks about how hard uh, hiring is, but for... For us, uh, I met my co-founder Cam, just a quick uh, precursor on this. We met almost eight, eight years ago now at a hackathon and we kind of became really fast friends, uh, built Launchico, which was a startup website builder, which we, while I was still in school and funded by my student loans, uh, grew to a thousand paying customers and we got acquired by Namecheap. And then when we were building Launchico though, we were pretty early on using Vue and really early on using a framework called TipTap. And Hans, who's on the team, he's one of the co-creators of TipTap. And so really what this team is a culmination of is almost eight years of meeting people and building connections. And then a lot of uh, great timing where people were available to work on something like Scalar, like quite the moonshot. So I'm pretty excited that the uh, opportunity is here to work with really amazing people. Like you said, like Hans, previous uh co-creator of TipTap, uh, Bryn, they uh, co-founded Ping, which went through IC, and then Cam and I did Launchico, and then we have a lot of other really amazing people on the team. So yeah, it's, I'm really, very, I'm incredibly grateful for the team we have. And it, uh, yeah, it, it makes a huge difference when you're building these relationships over a really long time and it doesn't really feel like work. So that's the tip I got, I guess it's time. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I love it. Thank you so much for sharing. And, uh, you know, now the team is off to the races. I'm wishing you happy growth in 2024 and, and beyond. And uh, why don't you quickly recap for us how Scalar started and then since the founding of the project of the company, uh, where you are today? Hmm. So when, so Cameron and I are builders, we built so many great products around the website builder, logo maker, everything. And pretty much time and time again, something we felt that was really underserved was amazing API documentation. And, you know, Stripe's been around for a long time. And it's always been interesting to us, like why have, hasn't Stripe docs been kind of a foundation for everyone's docs? So we kind of started pulling on that thread and thought, okay, why is that like Swagger or open API spec documentation, API testing, and then also just API documentation as a whole felt really stale and fragmented. So Cam and I, you know, we we're like, okay, this is definitely a space we want to go to huge market to tackle. And, um, so after we finished vesting at Namecheap, which was, um, I think January 1st, we finished working at Namecheap. We, uh, we were off to the races building scalar and yeah, I mean, it's been a crazy year just to think that we started uh, just just one year ago um, with the open source launch of the Swagger UI and Redoc the alternative. 
And then uh, we also have our full docs platform that we're going to be uh, launching next month, which uh, I'm excited to, to. How have you experienced this transition? What is new? Uh, what are the challenges uh, so far? And benefits, of course. Yeah, I've been a huge open source advocate and in the space for a long time. Um, I haven't maintained uh, an open source project uh, to the scale, um, but luckily uh, Hans has, he was the co-creator of TipTap. Um, Cam and I's passion is really just making something people want and make, making people excited about building. So really just interacting with the community and being able to help people with their docs and everything is just something I wake up every day and I'm super excited for. Um, so, so far it's been really great and I'm really excited for this year as we continue to grow. Absolutely. Uh, one of the, so one of the main things, I guess I like to ask often with founders, which are areas where challenges are presented is one distribution. And I think you're already doing great on that front. And then the other one is monetization. So I'm curious to hear what your strategy is on these two fronts, how you're approaching it and what you would like to to do as the year progresses? Hmm. So I think for around distribution, um, one of the big things we're really excited about too is just trying to integrate with as many frameworks as possible. Mm -hmm. um, I think everyone is building their, their services in different ways, whether it's like, you know, Express, uh, Fastify, uh, Elysia, um, Bun's really big right now, which is great. Um, it's super cool to see. And pretty much there's just all these different ways to build your services. But luckily the kind of glue together there around something we could do for documentation is around open API spec and Swagger. So really we built everything around that. So when we go to integrate with these frameworks, it makes it a lot easier for people to get amazing 10 out of 10 docs uh, effectively with zero lift. Um, we also made it really simple to theme too. And that's something that we're really excited about. My co-founder Cam, he does an unreal job. I'm gonna show some of the themes he's made today. And he does such an amazing job. And uh, so yeah, that, that's for us, just really trying to help as many people uh, get rock star documentation. Um, and then I think on the, how do we make money side, which is a, always a fantastic question. We have a, a, a hosted version of the docs. So, you know, the open API specification and Swagger documentation is free and open source. We also offer hosting for that on scalar.com. And then there is a paid version where if you want full guides or longer form written content, uh, which we're using TipTap for our rich uh, text mm -hmm. editor, um, you can uh, write longer form content. We have AI search, AI content writer, and uh, a lot of really cool features there too. Love it. And in terms of launching, uh, what have you seen work best on different uh, online channels and forums and whatnot? If there's any advice to share on that front. Um, and yeah. I think that's a fantastic question. And I think the quintessential answer is it depends. But I think something that the anecdote of Cam and I, where we've had a lot of success, we've been number one on Hacker News twice now. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much making effectively no, low friction, trying things out is always great and making something really, really great. I know it seems like a simple answer, but if people can just go try it out and have that magical experience with within under 15 or 30 seconds, it's truly, it's truly sweet and people are going to want to talk about it and try it out more. So that's probably my biggest recommendation is really reducing those barriers to entry. And then... The other one too is is finding your community. I think that's a big one. Finding out people who who really want to use it or the ideal people that are going to be using it, and uh, really building it, building it for them. So that's probably probably the advice I give. One hundred percent. I second that. Uh, make it super easy to get started. Uh, have a test run, and uh, maybe I can add to keep launching again and again. Um, so and, yeah. and utilize different different platforms as well. There's Hacker News, but there's also Reddit. There's Product Hunt, um, of course Twitter and LinkedIn. For uh, and and for on the socials, um, what what could you say there? I think for for me personally, I'm just really excited to help people and get them 
like get their docs awesome. So putting a, putting ourselves up there, it's just uh, it's just a way to help people. I think for if people are feeling, I think to to really go on your on your point of uh, of just launching as much as possible, I think that's great. I think there's so many amazing Y Combinator uh, blog posts about like launching as much as you can. Like there's you can never launch too early. Um, I think there is a little bit of a caveat there where if you make mm-hmm. something really really polished and launch it. Uh, it but again, it's just the, the barrier to entry and friction, getting that wow wow moment as fast as possible. But I think I think it's a lot easier when you're doing something that you're genuinely excited about, where you'll feel a, bit, a little bit less embarrassed. But I think everyone's different. Um, so I think that there's some mediums where you don't really necessarily have to like put your your face out there per se. Mm-hmm. Um, like you mentioned, like like Reddit, Hacker News, like Product Hunt. Um, so re- really, what you you think and feel is right. And are excited about. I think, I think people really. I get excited, and some of the most favorite people in my life are people that are super passionate about subjects that they're just talking about endlessly, and you can really see that on Twitter or any of these places where people are like actually excited about it. So I think just be genuine. I agree absolutely, and and it does come across when someone has that uh, genuine excitement. And then, you know, of course, we should do it one way or another. We should do this. We should distribute on those channels. And then, truth be told, if the product is awesome, it makes everything easier. But, uh, in Q1 2024, you are also working on a marketplace uh, on top of Scalar. Is there something we could say about it at the moment? Yeah, we um, essentially, you know, the H1 is document, discover, and test APIs. And a big part about one of the friction points we kind of see at the beginning was around documentation and making docs amazing. But the other side of it is integrating with APIs. Mm -hmm. Uh, The kind of goal that we're going for is, uh, so I I have an engineering background. Cam's like a phenomenal designer, unreal designer. Something that we really want to be able to hit is Cam's ability to just like jump in and start integrating with APIs. Right now there's like a huge, friction point and really it's not as accessible as it can be for the new wave of developers and engineers coming in. So uh, the kind of idea with it is we want to make it incredibly easy for people to integrate with other APIs with, with their APIs. So we're hoping for Q1, might, might be Q2, <laughs> we'll see. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I know how these timelines go as a fellow founder, it's, <laughs> but uh, with, with, with all these conversations so far, I, I, I can't help, but, you know, want to jump in straight to the demo and, and see all the action with Scalar, if that's something you'd like to do. Yeah, yeah for sure. I was thinking um, we could demo uh, the open source stuff, and then at the end I can jump into the uh, the hosted version. So let me just uh, share my screen. Awesome. Okay, so this is the Scalar open source repository, and this is where you can get started with our open API specification documentation tool, or Swagger, if you're familiar with OAS 2.0. So our integrations are, you can go right from a CDN with Vue.js, we also have, a, or React, we also have a bunch of server frameworks. Uh, so Fastify, Hono, Express, Nest, and also Elysia.js. Um, and kind of what Scalar is, is here we'll jump into the demo you can kind of drop in your uh open api specification so this is pet store you can preview it and you get really amazing documentation uh so there's tags endpoints we have full offline search um so you get search right in the browser go to it we show the responses also the different code snippet languages you can use um, and then the really, really cool feature is that you can test endpoints right in the browser. So we have a full dedicated testing client that goes over. So it feels really seamless. Um, and you can change variables, auth, cookies, the body, send out the request. Um, and then you can see all the responses right here. And then also you can see the full history of your uh, requests right there, which is really great. And one of the really, really cool things about Scalar too is uh, all of the theming we have. So it's really easy to add customization. So this is the moon theme, purple, solarized, um, and then we have dark mode and light mode. So it's really, really easy to make amazing documentation 
uh, with fantastic themes um, to your brand. So I'll walk through some of the cool themes we made with some of our integrations. So what was recently announced is Elysia made Scalar the, the default, uh, which is absolutely amazing. So now the default documentation for Elysia that you get when you're building APIs is actually Scalar. And let me jump through into what that actually looks like code-wise. So here's an Elysia app, uh, really straightforward. You just import uh, the Elysia Swagger package and you use it. You can change some information about it. And then when you're building your, uh, when you're actually building your framework or your server-side code, you can you get your all of your actual endpoints. Um, and then when you run, uh, I think it's bun run source index.ts. Um, let's go to, uh, what is the, sorry, what's the port now? This is classic. I think it was 3000. Yeah, let's do uh, 3100. Um, so now if you go, if you go to Swagger, which is where the endpoint is, this is what your documentation actually looks like for all of your endpoints. So you get pretty much free documentation. And this is the Elysia JS theme that we built, which is amazing. Cam did such a fantastic job. So That's light cool. mode, dark mode, it's got all of the parameters fully typed. Everything's right there and zero work, which is really cool. So Elysia JS is great. You can go check it out. Super fast. Love it. Uh, and the community is really, really nice. Um, so this is one of the examples, uh, we also have, um, inside of the repository, we have an examples folder, which goes through all of our integrations. So there's Hono.js, which again, it's super easy to get started. You just import the scalar API reference, and then depending on your experience with Hono and, and you, you know, it very well, or if you're, maybe you're new to it, you can create routes, add kind of decorators to it, describe the uh, endpoints. And then this is again, the Hono theme that we built. So this is the API being described by scalar through the open API specification. And again, light mode, dark mode, we have offline search, you can go check out each one and then you can test out the endpoints. And what's really magical about this integration too, is that it goes right to the server. So you can actually test out the, the API that you're building in real time with scalar. Um, which is something really, really cool. So if you can get really great docs, cool theme, test out your API while you're building it, which is really sweet. We also have the Fastify integration. So Fastify is, these are all just really amazing frameworks. So Fastify is kind of the super fast and kind of the de facto standard right now for, for Node.js. Um, I think it's one of the most popular frameworks. Again, we have NPM install uh, at Scalar Fastify API reference. It's really easy to add it. And then boom, after you've done your, your API coding and you're going, you're excited, you get these amazing docs for free with the, um, with the, with the theme right there. So this is something that's really great. We also have express, um, which is awesome. And then this is the, uh, nest JS theme that we built as well. So all of the framework frameworks that we support, um, let me just go to the repo can be uh, followed through from the getting started page, which is great. And we also have the full configuration here so you can configure everything. And we also have, um, we actually just released, I haven't even, I think this got merged this morning, um, <laughs> but we actually have a classic classic layout. So uh, kind of similar to what you're familiar with with Swagger UI. Um, and it works really well if you only have one tag, but, um, that's the, 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 the layout that I was showing was the modern one. Um, but yeah, you can also use our classic layout. Um, and that's really easy to change. You just pass them into the config, uh, with layout, but we also walk through how to actually theme and style your scalar docs. Um, right here, it's just all through CSS variables. Cam did a really great job showing a visualization on what everything is, which is great. Um, and yeah, so we're super excited about, about this. And, um, the, this is all the open source, uh, integrations, but if you want to use, um, if you go to scalar.com, we actually have the, uh, hosted version, uh, which is here. So this is, this is docs.scalar.com. So 
as you as I showed before, this is the references. You can import your Swagger spec, preview it right here. But if you need long form content, we built this notion like editor, um, so you can write longer form content if you need guides or getting started pages. Um, right now, everything is done in the app, but we are working on a Git Markdown sync feature because we know people like to have their uh, docs and code. Um, so that's something we're really excited about. And we have lots of really fantastic uh, integrations like math. Um, we built all of this using TipTap. TipTap is amazing. I highly recommend if people are looking for uh, to build rich text editors to use TipTap. Um, I've been using it for like six years. Um, and again, customization, we have it really easy to change themes um, and customize themes and light mode, dark mode. And, uh, and then when you're ready to publish, um, you make an account and you can either publish on a API documentation.com subdomain or your own uh, custom domain. And, um, and yeah, that, that's, that's Scalar in a, in a nutshell. So docs that are open source, but then also we have a, a paid host version in case you, in case that is what you need. Wow. I, I love it. This, this whole thing looks very, very good to see you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's super easy to, oh, I totally forgot about this as well, but we have um, a CDN version also. Um, where is it? So it's super easy to just drop in. You just put in the, you import the uh, script tag right there from JS Deliver. You give it an ID to mount to, and then you can just drag, uh, drag this in. And this is just with the pet store example. So really easy to integrate into your existing apps. Uh, or however, however you're doing it, just in case we don't have any integrations built out yet for you. So it's really simple to swap out for Redockly or Swagger UI or whatever your existing solution is. That was the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And for complex parameters like uh, arrays and objects, I saw that you guys have like nesting support and stuff. And that is- Yeah, yeah we support- um, Models, everything, right? Yeah, we have models. Um, yeah, I can I can show it. Um, we have models. We have uh, yeah, I'll show you. Yeah, so enums, any nested attributes, everything gets dereferenced too. So if you have models, you can go down here and we show all the types. Also, we preview the examples too, which is really helpful. So any, and then this is a great example because we actually show nested right here. Um, so yeah, we support Swagger, which is OAS 2.0, and we also support uh, Open API Spec 3 3.0 and up. Um, and then when I think it's going to be called right now, it's Operation Moonwalk, but it's going to be Open API Spec 4.0. We will be supporting that at launch as well. I think hopefully <laughs> later this year. I don't really know. I don't really know what their target is for that, but I'm excited for it. It looks great. Yeah, sounds very exciting. No, no, awesome. It's good. Thank you. Thank you so much for the demo, Mark. What I think, if people are really excited about it, the biggest thing I can really uh, advocate for is, is open source is beautiful where you can just jump into any project and you can kind of see the source code, contribute, finding a community, uh, getting getting started. And I remember the first time I contributed to open source, it was with this open source project called Jasper, uh, I, and it was created by Charlie and, oh, I forget, um, Shiro, Shiro, I forget, I forget their names, but they created like an always on voice controlled, uh, system built on top of the Raspberry Pi. It was kind of like the Iron Man, uh, Jarvis, but it was called Jasper. And actually Charlie's the creator of, of Ruff, uh, which if you're familiar with the Python linter, like that's just, it's been unbelievable to, to watch that absolutely grow. Speaking of open source. So, uh, I remember I sent an email to, to Charlie, uh, asking if I could contribute. This was like back in 2014. Um, and they were incredibly kind and gave me some, some guidance cause I was still in university. I didn't really know what I was, I had no idea what I was doing, but that just kind of shows the beauty of open source and people that are genuine and excited because they put in the effort to kind of help this person who was very new to Python and just open source. And I was able to, to go and contribute. And I built like the Google calendar, uh, Twitter, all these other integrations. So people could just chat and ask like, Hey, what do I have on my calendar today? Which 
you know, 10 years ago, it's, that was pretty exciting. But I think, I think the best thing you can really do is if you're trying to get started is looking for a community that you're excited to contribute to. And um, those people that built that are very excited to have you come in and contribute. And then I think when you go to the natural progression of you wanting to build something open source, or maybe you're starting there, I think the reverse just happens where people are going to be excited about what you're building and fostering that, that community of empathy and, and people are just going to be really excited to, to collaborate. So, so I think, yeah, just be, be genuine and, and, and go contribute to some open source repositories you're excited about. That's like the best advice I can give. And then also, you know, if you're interested in open API specification, view, uh, API docs as a whole, testing, uh, scaler, come, come, come check out github.com forward slash scaler, uh, forward slash scaler is the, the repo for that. And, um, we also have a discord. I'm incredibly act. The whole team's incredibly active. Uh, if you have any questions looking for, uh, issues to get started on, uh, we're, we're here and we're excited. And, and this is the, the thing that we wake up for that we're excited to work on every single day. So if that's something that you're excited about, then I would highly recommend checking out this and. Also, I just love to hear and see what people are building. Uh, so even agnostic of, of using Scalar, it's just, it's just fun to see uh, what people are building in the open source world. 